I did not realize that Acheron's rerun is already out. Time flies when you're skipping banners. I have an older video I made during Acheron's release talking about how she was a game-changing unit, and today I'm going to discuss whether or not my points in that video hold up now that we have her first rerun. I will be talking about this from the perspective of an E0 Acheron with S5 Good Night Sleep Well 4 Star Light Comb. My main conclusion back then was that Acheron was someone who has an incredibly powerful AoE nuking ultimate, so powerful that you can easily hit the 1 million damage mark, which was something that was very rare at the time. But outside of her ultimate, she doesn't really do much. And given that she doesn't use your typical energy, her strength comes down to how reliably you can battery her ultimate by applying debuffs. Back then, Acheron had little competition in terms of DPS units, but even nowadays, I don't think she's fallen off whatsoever. If you still like Acheron as a unit, you find her design really cool or you find her very fun to play, she definitely won't let you down. But if you don't find her too interesting, skipping her won't really hurt your account. I'll be playing in the background my E0 S0 Acheron against every single current endgame content and you can use it to judge whether or not you find her playstyle fun and you can use it to see what an E0 S0 Acheron can look like with free-to-play investment levels and see if that level of performance is something that you like or you don't like. Keep in mind, you could argue that currently the endgame content is tailored to work in her favor because they're trying to sell the current banner, but I've also used her in multiple endgame cycles during the break era and the follow-up attack meta, and she has consistently performed well for me in both the MOC and Apocalyptic Shadow. Pure fiction can be more hit or miss, depending on how quickly you can stack her up and how the enemy waves line up for your ultimate, but she has been usable across all the game modes for a very long time now. Overall, Acheron is an easy to use unit. You just put her with two Nihility debuffers, spam debuffs on the enemies, and use your Acheron ultimate to clean them up. Team building is especially easy because you're sort of locked into two Nihility teammates and currently the pool of decent Nihility supports are it's quite limited. So you have supports like Pella, Zhao Chiu, Gwenaifin, Silverwolf, or E1 Black Swan, and you kind of just pick and choose who you have built. In my case, I usually rotate between Pella, Zhao Chiu, or Gwenaifin, depending on enemy weakness. That's pretty much your Acheron and two support characters pretty much set in stone. And then the last character is your sustain unit, which can either be a preservation unit running trend of the universal market, such as fire main character, aventurine, fushuen, or Japard, or you can go for a healer with a debuff like Gallagher, or you could use sustain welt, or you could run sustain Ron May or sustain welt and Ron May together. You usually don't deviate much from these team options if you're at E0, at least with our current lineup of characters. If none of these teammates sound like units you want to build or play with, then maybe consider skipping Acheron. My favorite part about Acheron is her instant overworld killing technique. It saves a lot of time exploring new regions and going through a simulated universe. However, this is not as impactful as it once was because nowadays simulated universe has so many ways to let you skip fights or start fights with enemies at 1 HP so Acheron's technique is less needed now. I find Acheron a bit too simple to play personally. She doesn't really suit my playstyle of wanting to go over and over again, which is why I prefer Harmony units with action advance. And also the units you play with Acheron are usually also very simple. But I can't deny that Acheron can hit some very very high damage numbers. In the MOC, I would say she can usually clear under 2 cycles if the enemies are lightning weak. And then if the MOC is super favorable, like the current one, you could even attempt to go for zero cycles. However, if you're off element, then sometimes she can still comfortably clear within four to five cycles if you know what you're doing. While I don't think she's the same brute force machine she once was on release, I have always been able to make her work in at least one half of MOC so far. And every apocalyptic shadow, I have also tried to use her on one half and I've always been able to comfortably get around 3,500 points. For pure fiction, I haven't felt the need to use her, so I can't speak specifically for how she performs in suboptimal conditions, but given that her ultimate is a true AoE one-shot ability, as long as you can gain enough stacks quickly enough, she can definitely be usable. 
Personally, I don't like using Acheron in Pure Fiction, but the current one definitely makes it very, very easy to use Acheron because it lets you stack really, really quickly, making Acheron a very strong choice, especially in the second half of the current Pure Fiction. All right, now I'm going to go into a bit of a controversial subject. I don't think Acheron will stay at the top of DPS units. I don't even think she currently is at the top of the DPS units, but I don't think she'll drop to irrelevancy. She has a lot in common with Raiden and Genshin, where she will always be good, but better units might come out, but that doesn't make her unusable. More so a choice of whether you like her design, her kit, and her playstyle. I also think, similar to Raiden E2, I think Akron's E2 is a bit overrated, and hear me out, I think if you're looking to invest a bit more into your Akron, I would probably suggest going for the Light Cone first before you consider Eidolons. And the main reason is because the Light Cone is a noticeable damage increase and it's much easier to get than a new copy of a character. And on the road to E2, you have to get her E1 and her E1's not that good. So you kind of have to pull for a wonky Eidolon to get your way to E2. And that's kind of inefficient in my eyes. Then once you have her E2, unless you have a super invested non nihility support, like an E2 Sparkle or an E1 Robin or something similar, I don't think you'll notice too much of an improvement over something like running a Pella plus Chiao combo. And then if a new stronger nihility character comes out, her E2 will become less relevant. Although you could argue the reverse, where if another busted Harmony comes out, then maybe her E2 can get better. But in the end, I don't think you'll see as much of an improvement as a lot of people claim if you drop your Pella or your Chiao Chiao for a Harmony unit. At least currently, I don't think that you'll see that big of a jump. I would only suggest E2 Akron if you know you'll be playing Akron for a long, long time, because I do think removing the restriction to run two Nihility characters is great. It's always nice to remove restrictions on characters because it opens up the amount of teams you can build. But if you're someone who's casual or new to the game, that actually might be more confusing for you. It might be better for you to just stick with an E0 Acheron and make your team building a lot simpler. Overall, her E2 is definitely good. I just don't think it's worth the amount of pulls you might have to put in. Think of it this way, okay? I spent 220 summons on the Acheron banner and only ended up with a single copy of Acheron. Now imagine how many summons I would need to get E2. It would probably be over 500 wishes for me to get her to E2. I don't think her E2 is worth 500 summons. But if you get lucky and you get E1 early, then definitely you can push for the E2. Finally, for her relics, I think her relic set is in an alright domain to farm. It's paired with the Watchmaker set, which is useful on many characters like Ranmei or Harmony main character. However, her planar ornament is a pretty bad pairing. Or it's not horrible, but it's with the pure fiction only set. But a lot of the pure fiction characters that would use that set have decent alternative sets that are more viable in other content. So unless you're really struggling with pure fiction and you really need that set, I, I don't think it's that worth it. It's not the worst pairing in the world. There are other worse ones. But I would probably suggest crafting her planers instead of farming for them. You could definitely like do a bit of farming to see if you can land some decent pieces, but if it's taking you too long, like in my case, I probably farmed that domain for two months and didn't get a single attack orb, and so I just crafted one. Well, I had to craft a lot to get one, but you know what I mean. I just crafted it instead of continuing to farm that because for me personally, I had other sets that I wanted to prioritize more, like the Duran and Iron Cavalry one. So all that yapping out of the way, if Acheron is a character that you can see yourself playing, you like her teammates like Jiao Cho, Pella, Black Swan, or Silver Wolf, or you're someone who really wants to see the biggest damage numbers on the screen when you're playing, then Acheron is someone that you could go for. There's just so many alternatives nowadays that Acheron is not the head and shoulders best character. She's kind of just in line with a lot of the other characters.